John Smith. He was a member of the of the rescue fire company here in Shemokin. He was a former lieutenant. Uh, John was a dispatcher and a very good one. He was a he was a great guy. He was just really involved in just about everything. So he taught me everything I needed to know, and he was uh, just a peach of a guy. And then he was also the town historian. So anytime you needed a question on the history of the Shemokin Fire Department, and really Cole Township even, he was a man to ask. But he basically ran that faithfully. He was there every day, and he wouldn't miss a beat. I mean, everything that came in, newspaper-wise, he would, you know, all the documents, all the papers, newspapers. Uh, plus, when, uh, where he worked up here, he, there was a lot of information donated to the museum and stuff. Back when we were growing up, Shemokin was used to be, re realistically, was a, a booming town because you had the, you had the, the uh, it's the coal region, you had coal breakers everywhere. I mean, this town was packed. If you read a history book in Germany right now, uh, and they talk about the Industrial Revolution in the United States, our town is mentioned as one of the key towns of the Industrial Revolution. They're used to, the businesses were phenomenal. I mean, downtown, I mean, years, years and years ago, this Shemokin was a, I mean, was a big, big, big town. The child of demographics, where the parcels of land that every one of these fire companies is on, if you notice, is along the creek and they were donated by wealthy people that own parts of land in Shemokin. And some of these little plots were unattractive. So they donated them to the city to be used as a firehouse. And that's why you have this one here. It's right along Shemokin Creek. You have the Independence Fire Company right along Shemokin Creek. The West End, it's right over there by the creek. The friendship by the Shemokin Creek. So the Liberty is on, was on Sunbury Street, which is on the, along the highway. That's not along the creek, but they were all just little pieces of land that was donated to the city to be used as a firehouse or a fire station. So that's how it, that's how it all started. And it, different parts of town had their own fire company. I decided to become a volunteer because of my uncle relation. So my uncle was a lieutenant down here. And when I turned 14, he said, hey, I'm gonna get you to join a firehouse. So it was naturally here. And before I joined, I would always look for, you know, we had a, a real big ladder truck before this one. And it was always, man, that's the biggest truck. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, man, it's my uncle's on there. So it was kind of like the pride. So when I turned 14, I joined. And, uh, you know, it was just, I'm gonna join and hang out with my uncle. <laughs> I joined as a junior firefighter back in 1980 uh, at the Stonington Fire Company. My father got me involved in it when I was 14, and I've been doing it basically ever since. Is here within the sh in the city of Shemokin, at one time had a social uh, area that was originally set up, I believe, to give the firefighters. Uh, a place to go and they would be close by here in the event we would have a fire. The social clubs at one time played a huge part, if not a 100% part in the recruitment of firefighters back in the day because the social quarters was the hub of the f individual fire companies. That was their meeting place, their watering hole. Social club aspect really supports the firefighting and because of being volunteer and not every volunteer area you know through the state or country has social clubs this region around here uh, is just the way it's always been so basically the social club has what we call B members and they're just people off the street want to join a club and you know so already come to eat and you know drink and listen to music but all the revenue funds the fire side you know because of Shemokin ha is such limit has limited funding could never support a paid fire department you know so this area has social clubs which fund you know 90 percent of our equipment as far as how many clubs are left I believe there's only three social clubs in Shemokin now it would be us West End has one and uh, the Independence has one uh, some turbulent times here 
in the city of Shimokin because right now we are a uh, financially distressed city. Uh, when the coal industry declined post-World War II, uh, the, the, the kind of coal that we mine here is anthracite hard coal, and that's uh, best suited for uh, home heating. Well, the trends in home heating post-World War II uh, went to oil and natural gas, and, and coal kind of uh, literally fell off the map. In our secondary industry was textile. And as most of the textile manufacturing moved overseas, a lot of the small little garment factories that we had uh, around town and, and in the area also closed, which led to the decline of more jobs. And as that, as that declined, um, some of the, the storefronts and the, uh, the, the mercantile that we had in our downtown area also declined. I know that we will probably never get back to our heyday of, of when the anthracite coal mining was king. And because I don't think we'll ever see those days again. But I'm just hoping to bring Shimokin to be a place where you would want to live, a nice place to live, a nice place to raise your family. I think in many ways as the, the coal mine business died, as people have left the town, they still want to hold on to their heritage. Towns like Mount Carmel or the coal, towns in the coal regions are towns that hold on to their family heritage. The town at times seems that it's uh, just waiting for it to die. And yet there are a lot of people engaging in the town. Uh, there are people that have moved away because they can't find employment but they still see Mount Carmel or the coal regions. That's our town. That's where our family is and where we live. Consolidation is one of the things that needs to be seriously explored. Uh, the idea of everybody in the, in the city having their own little piece of, how can you say, part of the town that's theirs. This fire company is in the West End. This fire company is in the East End. This one's in the Fifth Ward. Those kind of days are kind of over. We, us and the Liberty just recently merged. Uh, the Liberty was up here on Sunbury Street, and they are here with us. Well, they're here permanently now. There's a lot of worries out there, and so then our two companies just went ahead with it. And, you know, everybody was kind of like watching to see what happens with these two companies. Is there going to be issues? Is there personality conflicts? The merge is working wonderfully. Um, we, uh, the only issues I would say as a starting from a, a point would be getting used to this is both of our houses compared to, you know, you're coming in someone's house. So you want to make sure, you know, you're not stepping on toes, but then at the same point, you're trying to make it your own. So you're learning your boundaries and we've gotten to a point where, okay, we know our boundaries. We know what we can do. You know, we've all meshed completely together as one and things are going great with the merge. And the future, I believe, is, is going to be consolidation where everybody can pool their resources, uh, out of necessity for a smaller, uh, a smaller base of personnel. Within, within the individual fire companies, the camaraderie would be the same thing as uh, somebody being in the Army or the Marine Corps or the, the service. Very close, extremely close. And the camaraderie which between the fire companies themselves was just as close. For the, for the personnel that the individual companies have, the camaraderie is still there. Everybody loves each other and everybody respects each other and everybody works together for a common goal and that's to put the fire out. Uh, the town really has, has brought me back about 30 years. Uh, that's the way they live right now. Family is still very important to them and neighbors are very important to them. One thing that is so strange at nighttime is I can walk to go lock the church up, which is two blocks away. It'll take me 45 minutes to an hour. Everyone's out on their porches at night and they're out talking and conversing. Or cars will be driving by and say, oh, there's Mary on the porch and they stop and boom, and leave their car there. So I think the volunteerism is they're looking after for each other. What does the, the firehouse do for the community? Well, we get involved also in some community events. Uh, we sponsor uh, baseball teams, little league teams. Uh, we do community projects. For instance, just recently, 
uh, the local parochial uh, Catholic high school here is in need of some money to, they want to build a chemistry lab. And uh, this particular company right here donated $4,000 towards the building of that, that chemistry lab. We also donated to the city of Shimokin uh, another $4,000 for uh, a handicapped lift to be installed at our community swimming pool. So we do community things like that and we, we also, uh, so we get involved in that. We, we, we're involved in the local parades and stuff like that. And, but, but for the most part, we try and do good community things along with protecting the citizens from the ravages of fire. When, when I was growing up, uh, basically what that, the museum used to be years and years and years ago, they were the public bathrooms for the city of Shemokin. There was one on this end of Shemokin and one on the other end of Shemokin. And uh, the city donated it to the rescue fire company. I mean, that museum, what that means to me is just, you know, that's all of our history. You know, I can't believe 26 years have gone by, but when I go over there and I'll see even pictures of me as a teenager and real young, and I'm like, I can't believe we did all that. You know what I mean? It's just everything you kind of forget. You can go over there and be like, I remember that fire, I remember that fire, I remember that guy, you know, a lot of people retired. It just brings back, for me, it's old memories. There's a lot of history inside, inside that building. After he took ill, we, we, uh, we lost, we're, we're losing a lot of history because we just, when we come back from a call or a fire, you know, it's, he would be on top of things and he would start the clippings in the newspapers. He would, t you know, like gather the history right away where, you know, our primary job is to get ready for the next one. You know what I mean? We just, and then get up and go to work the next day. You know what I mean? This is Shemokin, you know, this little small town of 7,000 people, you know, this is what they did.